record. Today's date is February the 26th, 2013. It's approximately 1.51 p.m. I am present with uh, Tasmia Whitehead, her attorney David LaMalva. My name is Richard Reed. I'm the district attorney of the Rockdale Judicial Circuit. Also present in the room is Chief Investigator for the Rockdale County District Attorney's Office, Bill Bruckner. Uh, the conversation that we're going to have over the next few minutes is going to be recorded. It's being recorded in two ways. First, we have a camera set up here in the room, and then there's a camera system in this room is going to record what we talk about as well. You understand that, Ms. Whitehead? Yes, sir. Uh, you realize that you're under indictment in Rockdale County Superior Court, indictment number 2011-CR-1376. You've been charged by the Rockdale County Grand Jury with malice murder, felony murder, and aggravated assault. You're aware of what you've been charged with, is that correct? Yes, sir. Uh, we are going to spend some time today discussing the events of January the 12th and January 13th, 2010, surrounding the death of your mother, Jarmeca Whitehead. Were you aware that that's what we were going to discuss today? Yes, sir. Okay. And you had an opportunity to discuss that with your attorney, David Lamala? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, as I mentioned, the conversation is being recorded, and to make sure that um, you understand your rights. I'm going to read your rights to you. I know you've heard these before in context with this case, um, but I'm going to read them to you to make sure you understand what your rights are and how you can avail yourself of those rights during the course of this conversation. Okay? Yes, how far did you go in high school? I went to 10th grade. 10th grade, and you were about to finish the 11th grade, is that correct? Yes, in school, but while I was at um, the Metro Detention Center, mm -hmm. I, have, um, I think I acquired six credits, and I have four more until I graduate. Okay. okay. You can read and write. Yes, sir. What I'm going to ask you to do is just follow along with me. This says Office of the District Attorney, Rockdale County, Statement of Miranda Rights. Your rights are, you have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law, and we'll discuss that further in just a second. You have the right to talk to your lawyer and have a lawyer present with you while you're being questioned. You cannot afford to hire an attorney. One will be appointed to represent you before any questioning if you wish. You can decide at any time to exercise these rights and not answer any questions or make any statements. Do you understand your rights? At this point. All right. Uh, I'll cover that in ju just a second. And let me read the, the rest of this. Waiver of rights. I have read the above statement of rights and I understand each of these rights. Having these rights in mind, I waive them willingly and make a statement. All right. In reference to the one that you pointed to, which is Section 2, anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. I have agreed with your attorney that anything you tell me today I cannot use in my case in chief when we go to trial. That means I cannot put it up as evidence first. But if you choose to testify, and you should testify at trial differently from what you tell me today, then I could use that to challenge or impeach your testimony. All right, you understand that? And is that what you discussed with your attorney? Yes, sir. And what your understanding is? Yes, sir. All right. With all these rights in mind, then, do you wish to talk to me today? Yes, sir. All right. What I'm going to ask you to do is initial by these, these statement of rights, I'm going to ask you to sign your name there. My further understanding, Mr. Lamalva, that you have no objection and you waive any objection to my participating in this interview and asking questions with the understanding that if any part of this conversation was necessary to be presented to a jury at trial, that Chief Investigator Bruckner would act as a witness. Yes, that's correct. You right. do not object to being part of this as a potential witness or waiving your waiving your right to, to be part of this process. Correct. 
Uh, Ms. Whitehead, how old are you today? I'm 19. And what is your date of birth? You, real, you realize and you understand that I've already spoken with your sister, Jasmine Whitehead? Yes, sir. Okay. I'm going to start very simply, and I'm going to start with the night before your mother's death. So I'm going to start with January the 12th, 2010. Can you tell me what you and your sister were doing that evening? on the computer for a little while, um, just sitting around the room talking, nothing really came home to school, or was it the shop? It was just at home, sitting in the room, okay. asking what they do. Did you have any homework to do that night? I know you had just started back at Rockdale High no. School. No homework? No. Alright, so you, you're, was anyone else there at the house? besides you and your sister before your mom came home? No, just me and my sister. Okay. Uh, the computer that y'all were on that night, whose computer is that? My mom's. Do you remember the password to that computer? No. Right. But you and, you and your sister had access, your mom gave y'all access to the computer? Yes. What did you do with the computer? What, what type of activities did you perform on the computer? Um, mostly like through Yahoo, um, because we didn't have cell phones, so she would um, like, but I, I almost like texting, but since it's not a phone, you just kind of send it to the person, you know, and talking back and forth with Terio. Okay. Is that what you were doing that night? Were you talking back and forth with Terio? I think so, and then I think I was on, I think I was on Facebook for a little while. I think I was talking to my friend David, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Besides Terrio and Devin, communicated with anyone else that night? No, I don't think computer? I talked to Kelsey that night. Okay. I don't think it's not that night. Okay. Uh, do you recall approximately, or do you know approximately, what time your mother arrived home? It was after midnight. Maybe one, two, two, two. It was Devin or two. It was after midnight. All right. It was late. Uh, describe what happened when your mom came home that night. Well, she came in through the front door, and she was smoking a black and mild, and she was she she was drunk, high, both maybe, and she, she was smoking a black and mild, and she was talking on the phone for a little. While. I was talking, and then she came she came in, and then later on she was kind of talking about the laundry. She was mad about the laundry, and she came into my room and she was going on and on about the laundry and this was shortly after she got home yes yeah, it was shortly after it's kind of i guess so yeah not that she wasn't there that long when she came and what home. made you believe that your mom was drunk and high because i know her and i've witnessed how she act when she high and drunk how was she acting well when when she either she drinks or smokes, she gets like this par paranoia, paranoia. So she gets like, like she'll say stuff like, um, check the doors and keep checking the doors and check under the bed. Everybody get in the closet. Everybody get out the closet. Go check the windows. The police out there. The army coming. Stuff like that. And it, like she, the thoughts don't hold for a long time. So it's like one minute she might be talking about a police coming, then she's talking about cooking something, then she's talking about guard parts, stuff like that. And then she has this thing where like her, her mouth would kind of move like, like that. So, and was she that way? Was she making those comments yeah, she, that night? Because we, you know, she came in saying all that, we already knew. So. At one point, I, she was like, lock the door. And then she was like, so we locked the door. And she was like, unlock the door. And then I kept my, at least she, she was acting like that, I kept my door locked. And then she got mad with the door being locked. And then I just didn't continue with the laundry and stuff. She was mad with the laundry. Um, and at that point in time, it was just you, your sister, and your mom. Is that correct? My understanding is Robert Robert had left on a yeah. road trip and was out Robert of town. Robert had left to go to to shop. Yes. May I ask? Yes. Mm -hmm. You said yes. When you when she came in, what was she doing or what was she saying? And you answered she was smoking a black mile and she yeah, was she saying. Had it on me. 
Did you see her when she came in? Yeah, I seen it because as soon as she opened the door, I went to, if she would have came in the garage, I probably wouldn't have came out the room. But when she came in through the front door, I knew something was wrong. Where so, were you when she came in? And I was in my room, but I came out. When I heard her open the door, I came out. And kind of, my room was right here, and just right there, the front door. So I just kind of came around the corner. You and your sister were still awake at that point? Mm hmm uh, was it customary for y'all to stay up that late? Well, was it usual for y'all to stay yeah, up that late? Yeah, but it's not being there that long. The night before, I think we stayed up that late, too. Okay. So your mom was discussing the laundry. Had she asked you to do the laundry no, before she, she left? She didn't ask us to do the laundry. She was just like, how you know, you see you see all this laundry in here, and y'all do something, and y'all not going to sit around and not do anything. Is she talking about laundry in the laundry room or is she talking about laundry in, in your bedroom? Really both because when she came in the room, that's when she started saying things about our laundry inside the room. And she was like, you know, you just wash that stuff. That stuff came from our grandma's house. Wash that stuff, you know. Okay. What happened then? Um, that's when she went out the room and she was, that's when with all the, the check the doors and open the doors and then she came back later on after that and that's when she was still harping about the, the laundry and saying you know y'all haven't got up and did it yet mm -hmm. and I wasn't and she started talking she she left and I was like you know kind of because when she used to be like I used to put her to bed and kind of you had to kind of coax her into going to bed like you know little by little so I got up and I was like you know let's just go go to bed and stuff and then she was talking to, she went inside my sister's room and she was talking to, on the phone. And of course, later on I found out, I, was, I didn't really know Jody, I just heard his name from her and Yaka. So she was talking to him pretty late. And then, Well, did, and maybe I didn't understand, did you actually get her to bed at some point before yeah, she, she was came, talking to Joe? Yeah, she went back and she went to her room. All right, and you, you kind of coaxed her into the room. Yeah. Did, did you actually put her in bed, uh, help her take her clothes off, put on a night nightgown or whatever? No, she she put on her own. No, I don't know. She didn't even have her nightgown. Did she when she had net when she came back out to talk to Joe? When I peeked out the room, she had put her nightgown on. But when she went into bed, no, I just kind of sat on the edge of the bed. I got like, usually I just sit on the edge of the bed, and you know, it was like, we'll calm down. Nobody outside. So she came out, she was talking to Joe back in your sister's bedroom. My sister's room. Uh, what happened then? She just, we, me and Jazz are still up, so we just kind of listened and stuff. And when she finally got the phone, it was pretty late. And she, um, we had locked the door again. And she tried to try to lock, and it was locked. And then she started cursing and stuff about the lock. Then, um, which, which lock? To which door? To my bedroom. To your bedroom. Why had you locked the door? No. Okay. It wasn't really like a, we just locked it. Right. What time was it approximately? I know you can't tell me for sure, but approximately what time was it that your mom finished talking to Joe? It, really, it had to be probably an hour later, probably. What, I'm not sure. What time in the morning do you, do you, uh, do you have some idea as to how late it was? When we finally went to sleep? Mm hmm Probably like five. It was late. Okay. Why did you and your sister stay up that late? I mean, like, when my granddad also was an alcoholic, and I always stayed up with them. It was just kind of a habit when I know they're like that. I always stayed up with them. When your mom was, was in the house, once your mom came home, and during the course of the, the the early morning hours before you went to sleep, was your mom drinking then? I'm not sure. Did you see her with any type of alcoholic drink? No. When she was, came home? No, she just had the black and white. Okay. Oh. And you believe, you know it was late. You think it might have been around 5 a.m., but it was late when you and your sister finally went to sleep. Mm -hmm. Tell me now about the next morning. So now we're talking about the morning of January the 13th. How'd you wake up? How'd you get up that day? Um, 
know it was later than we intended it to be. And I think it was just kind of like... If it had been a normal day, how would you wake up? Did alarm, you have an alarm, alarm clock? clock? All right. So alarm clock, um, and I know you had only been there a short period of time, but back when, back when you had lived with your mother before, how did you, how, what was the customary way that you got up? Did she wake you up, alarm clock, Robert wake you up if he was home? Alarm clock. Usually. Alarm clock. And y'all had an alarm clock in your bedroom yeah, the morning of the 13th of January. Yes, yes sir. All right. And once again, thinking back, did the alarm clock go off? I don't think it was late. I don't think so. No. Okay. No. All right. Uh, what's the first thing you remember when you woke up that morning? Uh, like my first thought or first thing I did? Well, first thought, first thing you did? Um, I was like, we had to get up and go. That's why I could, I could, you know, you kind of feel when your body get accustomed. You can kind of tell when it's when you feel late. So I just kind of felt like it was kind of late. And then um, as soon as I, because my bed, when you pull it out, jazz, when I got up, jazz got up. So we still had our, like, night clothes on. Which consisted of what? What did, what did you wear? Do you remember what you wore? I just heard it was just a sh Shorts and t-shirts. Were you tired? Yeah. Because I, I guess at this point you'd only had a few hours sleep. Yeah, I was asleep, yeah. Right. You and Jazz woke up. Was she similarly dressed to you? Did she yeah. have on similar clothes? I, I, I know. I think she. I remember she had some shorts on. I'm not like you know sure what the shirt looked like, what it said, but I know she had some shorts on. All right. So you both had shorts on, you had a t-shirt on, and your sister had something comparable to yeah. a t-shirt. Um, what happened? So you wake up, what did you do that morning? Well, after we just kind of, you know, the room is small, it's got a bathroom attached to it, so to do anything with the leave the room. And Bathroom's uh, kind of right, not right across the hallway, yeah. but almost right across yeah. the hallway. So, but we didn't, like, just go to the restroom. Like, Jay's kind of just, you know, he's kind of, walked to the kitchen, she was right behind me, and you know, my mom was in there, she was, I don't, I don't know if she'd already been asleep or she was just still up from the night. Okay, but when you went to the kitchen, your mom's there, she what's she doing? She, I don't know if she was getting, maybe ready to make something to eat, maybe, but she was kind of, she wasn't really standing far back inside the kitchen, she was, like, where the microwave was at, almost, in front of like between maybe the microwave and the refrigerator. Okay. So she's there in the kitchen. You went to the kitchen. Did, did Jazz go to the kitchen as well? Yes. Uh, what happened then? She was in there. You know, she was well, she first soon she saw us. She starts cursing and stuff. I think she was mad about us being late and stuff. But she didn't, you know, tap on the door when it set. I think that she know knew that we was late. She was, you're not, you're not going to do anything y'all want to do and stuff. And she had the pot, and she just kind of gesticulating with the pot. And she was just kind of swinging around and stuff. And I was just leaning against the counter. Well, let me ask you, at this point, you said she's mad, and and you think she's mad because y'all got gotten up late for school. That, or maybe because, you know, what happened the night before, and, you know, you know, knowing that he probably wasn't supposed to be drinking and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, when she, when she got mad, were y'all mad at that point? And I'm not talking about later on, but right at this point when you come in the kitchen first thing in the morning, and she's mad and upset, were y'all mad? I was mad? still asleep, so no, because it wasn't really anything new. You know. All right. So like she was a shouter, so she shouted. Anyway. What you said that she said something. Mm -hmm. She said, y'all not going to do whatever y'all want to do. And I'm just not, not going to sit in here and do whatever you want to do. And what do you think she meant by that? What was she referring to? I guess it's not being at school. I mean, she thought we were just coming in, like, wasn't going to go to school. I was just, hey, we're coming in. and we're not going. Like, maybe she thought we missed school on purpose. Mm-hmm. Okay. And you said she's got a pot in her hand? Yeah. And I think you said she's... Tell me again what she was doing with the pot. Just kind of like, like you know, like talking, and they started kind of gesticulate with it, just, mm -hmm. you know, you, you know, like that. What happened then? 
Well, you're just, just kind of doing that, and then I'm just kind of leaning against the counter, not really saying anything. And Jazz moved forward. She's not moving like forward towards her. She was like behind me. So she kind of like, you know, step over and stuff. And then she like, like kind of like almost like slung the pot like that. And I think like Jazz kind of like put up the number like that. And after that, I'm not really sure as far as the kitchen. All right. So when she, you said your mom slung the pot. Did she physically let go of the pot, or, or she just kind of, she swung yeah. her arm out and had the pot in yeah. her hand? And she has put her hand up. Yeah, like, kind of like, like that. Okay. Because, like, she didn't see it coming, so she was just like... Did the, did the pot, did she actually make con? did Jazz make contact with yeah. the pot? Did the pot make contact it with her? They're on her arm. What happened then? I'm not really sure. It was, I'm not really sure. Not exactly how it went step by step. And, and I understand that. Uh, but to the extent that you can remember, can you tell me what happened next? Yeah, I, I took the pot out of her hand and just swung, like, you know, flung it on the floor. You well, took not really on the floor. I just, you know, kind of put it down. Because I didn't want to look jazz. All right, so you took the pot away from your mom. What happened then? She, like, kind of just, like, charged for it. I didn't need her at jazz. Can I, can I stop you for just a second? When when your mom swung out the pot and Jazz put her arm up, did your mom try to hit her again with the, after Jazz blocked it? Yeah, when she did like this. Did your mom this, try to hit her again? Yeah, when she did like this, that's when I grabbed it. You grabbed the pot away from your mom and slung it across the floor? Yeah, I just kind of, like, my dad, I didn't like throw it, I just kind of put it down. And then, and then you said your mom went at Jazz? Yeah. What happened then? She just, I'm not really sure. I don't know. Like, it's just not like really vivid at that point. I don't remember. Okay. What do, at what point do you remember what happened? I just, like, I remember her just, like, just talking, like, just calling jazz names and stuff. Were y'all still in the kitchen at that point? Yeah, it was the kitchen, but it was the whole thing was like it's not far back in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. It was more towards the front. And you know, the kitchen's not really big, so it's an archway, really right there. And it was like she kind of like she was going to stop and stuff. And I like well, I know she she turned. She turned around, like towards me, because at that point she was facing towards the archway, and I was still behind her. And I don't know. She thought she was going to stop at first. I'm not really sure. I don't really remember too much. Was at this point in time was Jazz mad? She wasn't saying anything. Like she wasn't yelling. Okay. At this point, were you mad? Hmm. It was, it's just, I wasn't happy. I, I felt like a sense of like, just tired of it. Like, you know, like just, I just like, you know, something you deal with. It's just like, come on, just for a more. What happened next? Where did it go from here? To the living room. What happened in the living room? I left some stuff out. Okay, well, just tell me. I'm sorry. Um, I don't know how I guess I'm nervous. I'm sorry. When we were in the kitchen, I forget this, when I had took the pot from her, she, she, this one she had grabbed, and I kind of turned around, she said, get back. But she didn't keep the knife. What happened to the knife? Huh? What happened to the knife? You said she didn't keep the knife in her hand. Yeah. I took it out of her hand, too. Okay. When she said, but before, I'll, I'll get to there in just a second, but before 
when she said get back, when she picked up the knife and said get back, mm -hmm. did y'all move back? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, like put the knife because you don't scared. Okay. okay. And then what happened? How was it that you were able to get the knife from her? Because we wasn't, like I said, the kitchen is so small, like you're not. I know where it is. I've, yeah, I've been there. Stand side by side because it's so close. So I wasn't like really, I was on the side of her. And she was like, get back. She wasn't pointing at me. She was pointing at Jazz. And she was like, get back. Like that. And then I just came from the side. I kind of like hold, held her wrist like that. And I was kind of holding the wrist trying to get out her hand. All right. And this is still there in the, the kitchen, kitchen, right there by the archway. Yes. Not, not way back towards the refrigerator or the laundry room, but there. No, just this is, yeah, this is more so everything really from like the microwave. Up. I got you. So you've got her hand, and you're able to get the knife away from her? Yeah, it just kind of, like, clean the floor. Okay. All right. What happened next? That's when she kind of, like, went towards jazz, towards the archway. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then she turned towards me, and it seemed like she was going to stop. And it's like kind of, kind of walked out of the kitchen. Mm-hmm. She walked out of the kitchen or you did? I'm sorry. I couldn't hear you. The jazz was in, in before. Mm -hmm. It was like if it was going down, the jazz hurt me. So she just kind of like turned like, you know, and just walked. She who? My sister. Okay. Okay. Then what happened? She, she was acting like she was just still yelling and stuff. Like not really. She who? My mom. She was just yelling and stuff, and she was calling us whores and sluts and stuff like that. Yeah. At this point in time, were y'all yelling back at her? No. Okay. Mm -hmm. What happened then? So she's yelling. Jazz has walked out of the kitchen. You're still in the kitchen. I'm, I'm walking behind. Jazz? Behind. No, I'm behind walking. Behind your mom. Okay. Yeah. What happened next? Well... I'm not, I'm not sure exactly how it occurred. I'm not sure, like, if she, she just, like, kind of turned around and was, you know, just started again, like, I'm not even sure. So it's, it's more like, I don't remember like in the, going like a down a timeline, it's more like snapshots for me. Okay. And, and whatever you remember, tell me what you remember next. What's, what's the next concrete snapshot of what's happening? Like she, um, she went like towards, she went back, she went back to the kitchen and that's when it kind of seemed like it was just going to be over. Like she was quiet towards the kitchen, so it was like, you know, she's going to the kitchen. Um, and then she came back, and she was sending some stuff, and some, we all going to die or something. She's going to die. And she had it in her, in her hand. She had what in her hand? Didn't, like, you know, where were you and your sister at this point? Just in the living room, like by the couch. I guess by the couch, yeah. So she came back with the knife in the living room. Yeah. And what happened then? I'm not sure the first thing that happened. I don't remember. All right. But, well, how did it, even if you don't remember the exact order of how things happened, what did happen next? The next thing I remember? Yeah. Um, I just, like, she was, I remember being on the ground, and she was on, she was, like, on top of me, and I remember, like, Jazz being behind her, and, I mean, I don't, like, I know the, the knife is the most important part, but I don't really remember it so much. And I remember her being on top of jazz, and I remember 
like the couch. And then like a point where like she was like you know like kind of like trying to force it down. She forced it up, forced it down. Like I remember that. Who has when you when you see that in your mind? My mom. Your mom has the knife. And she's trying to do what with it? She's like forced, like she's on top of Jazz, and she got like her knees, like kind of, like, you know, pin somebody down. And she was um, like kind of forcing it down, and Jazz was like had her hands, and I came behind her, and I was, you know, kind of like, grabbed her arms and stuff. So she, and then she kind of like rolled off Jazz and rolled onto me. And this was like right, I guess right by the tail with Jazz, but she got off Jazz, Jazz got up and then she was like fighting with me and I was trying to push her off me and stuff and I had kissed her. Did she still have the knife at that point? Mm -hmm. Your mom did? Mm -hmm. And so she's on you mm -hmm. and you've, you've kicked her. What happened then? I'm not, I'm not sure which what it was, but I think she, I think Jazz hit with the base. But it was like. Blink, she didn't even blink. And do you recall what happened to the vase? Which you mean? Like what you mean? When Jazz hit your mom with the vase, what happened with the vase? I'm not understanding. Okay. Well, let me ask you this. Do you do you have an idea in your mind of how many times Jazz hit your mom with the vase? The once? One, once, twice, three times. I'm just, and I'm not trying to suggest an answer. I'm just, what do you remember? I think once. Okay. I don't remember. Okay. Uh, when I have spoken, how do you recall a base being used? Which, which your senses do you recall? Shame. Did you mostly hear it or mostly see it? Mostly, mostly hear it. It was some like, and I said when it happened, it wasn't like a big momentum part because it just like it was like she stopped and was like you know it was like a big turning point. Okay, and and I think I heard you say that when she asked hit her with the base, it didn't really have an it effect. Didn't phase it, yeah, like right. like she didn't scream out or she didn't stop or anything. It, is the pot still in the kitchen at this point? Was your mom ever hit with the pot? I, I do remember, I don't remember exactly how it occurred. Okay. That stuff makes any sense. Was that in the kitchen or was that in the living room? Mm -hmm. I want to say the kitchen. Uh, back in the living room, Jazz has hit your mom with the, the vase. Mm -hmm. Your mom is on top of you and she still has the knife. What happened then? Well, she was, she just stopped with the, with the vase. She had the medallion or uh, the little necklace. And you mean she, she who? My sister. Had the medallion. Yeah. Okay. And what, what did she do with the medallion? She kind of put around neck, like trying to, you know, pull her, pull her off. And was, was Jazz able to pull her off? Well, with me, I pushed her and she was, you know, pulling her off, pushed her. But like, as soon as she like got off me, she just like kind of sprang to her feet. And then she came at Jazz, because I was still on the ground. Mm -hmm. Jazz was standing there. And so did she go at, at Jazz? Yes, yeah, she did. Okay, what happened then? I'm not sure. I don't like, remember, like, like you know. I understand. What, what, do you, what do you remember that happened next? What's the next snapshot? She was... It was I was all so tired because I just I was just telling you know they was kind of just going at it and I was just telling you know, just I kept telling her to stop to stop just stop just stop and she like the whole time she just was talking and yelling and stuff like she was just yeah. at this point in time were you mad because I was just. Yeah, I guess so. I just was Based on what you could observe, was Jazz mad at this point? I 
So. So. I guess I don't really remember. I understand. And so you're yelling stop. What do you remember next? Mm -hmm. Let me ask you this some question. Did your mom stop when you yelled stop? No. She just like And what did she what did she continue to do? She was like kinda of, not only like at one point she had like she was kinda of like just kinda of hitting I don't know, like like the black part of it and she was she was like wouldn't and I know then Jazz had got the knife from her and Jazz got a knife from her. And it was it was just like I don't know, she would it wasn't like like a double team thing, it was just like when when she was I just trying to stop her from hurting Jazz. So when Jazz got the knife I just kinda of stood there and then I don't to like remember. What did Jazz do with the knife? came towards her, what Jazz do with the night? She would know, she just kind of like, you know, tell me to give it my mom, like, grab, mom grab towards, towards the night. And she had like, this is the only one I really remember. And she was just kind of heady in her hands and, you know, trying to turn it. And she was trying to turn it. Who had it in her hands? They like both, like they both was holding on to it. Okay. And then like, you know, she was trying to turn it towards Jazz. Jazz. I don't I didn't, I didn't even do anything at this point. Wait, what, what do you mean you didn't do anything at this point? Like I was just, I was just. Watching what was happening. Is that what you mean? No, I, I wouldn't even say it was like I just didn't know what to do. What happened then? What do you remember next? I was trying to, I was trying to get my mom because she was like, a, Jazz is kind of against the wall, I think, the wall by the, the door. What door? By my mom's door. Into the bedroom? Mm -hmm. and she had her kind of against the wall, so I was uh, had her shoulders, kind of, you know, trying to pull her off of her. Pull, pull who off of her? Pull her mom off jazz, because okay. she had back against the wall. And she was... I, mean, I didn't see the mic at this point, so I'm not sure. Had your mom been stabbed at this point? Do you know? No. When did you, maybe we're not at the point yet, but when did you first see blood? When did you first realize your mom had been stabbed? I really don't remember. I remember seeing blood. We, I mean, just didn't seem like, how do I really say it? I guess when her and, I don't, I don't remember. At, at, at this point you said your, your mom had Jazz up against the wall and you were pulling your shoulder trying to pull her away. Mm -hmm. What is it that you remember, what's your next snapshot? What is it that you remember next? She's just on the floor. Who's on the floor? Mm -hmm. At this point in time, as your mom's on the floor, where's Jazz? I don't even remember. Like, I don't, for me, 
Where is your mom on the floor? She's what, in the living room, like right in front of the door. And once which again, door? which door? My mom's door. Bedroom, Bedroom door. door. She's on the floor. What's your mom doing on the floor? Talking. What's she saying? Uh, call Mr. Beavers and I'm grateful. And Is your mom stabbed at this point? Do you I know? I guess like it wasn't like a puddle of blood or anything. So I, at that point, no, I didn't, you know, maybe looking back, but at that point, no. Okay. And she was just there, and I, you know, I just thought it was over. Thought, you know, she'll calm down. Was it over? Mm -hmm. What happened next? Me and Jess left. We left the room. When I came back, she was gone. When you left the room, where'd you go? To my, to my room. And and why'd you go to your room? Just kind of. Like, you know, I thought I was kind of separating, like, you know, you know. Okay. So you, so you and Jazz went to your room. How long were you in your room? Approximately. I know you can't tell me exactly. Maybe. I mean, it wasn't, it was, it was maybe, it's probably under two, three minutes. Um, okay. at this point in time, is it, is it, Daytime or is it still dark? I'm not sure. I don't remember. Okay. So you're in your room two or three minutes. What happened? And I assume you came out of your room. Mm -hmm. and you said your mom was gone. Mm -hmm. Where'd your mom go? Well, I checked the rooms because I was just you know I didn't so I just looked. Well, I didn't check the room. I checked. I went inside her room and she wasn't there. And then. But you know, there's much going on. I just I looked the back door. The back door was open, okay. so I went out the back door and through the gate. And then as soon as I turned the corner, she was right there. So, All right. As soon as you turned the corner, she was right, right there at the corner. Or was she at the side between the the two townhomes? She was like soon. As soon as I with the so that's the next house, the next door neighbor house, this house, this is the back gate. So she came through the back gate, and I went around right here. As soon as I hit the corner right here, she was right here. And what you're marking is where she was. Is kind of this little, yeah. this little blue dot. Yes. So she's at the corner, and you see her. She sees you. Now at this point, so you're, now you're outside. Is it daytime or is it dark at this point? Daytime. Okay. Yes. You see her, she sees you, what happens then? She was she like she was already walking back toward so it's almost almost like we kinda almost ran into each other. But of course I saw her. She was already walking towards like the back gate. So I was just like come on. I said come on. Is she is was your mom hurt or injured at that she point? Was, she was still walking, like she wasn't staggering, she wasn't crawling, she was just walking. Okay. And you said, Come on. Mm -hmm. Did you at this point while you're still outside, did you touch your mom anyway? No. Did you lead her inside no, or anything like that? I didn't like you know want I didn't touch her at all. I didn't want her to think like you know. Okay. So what happened then? She was walk I walked in first. She walked in behind me. And when she came back, she sat down on the couch. Um, not the couch by the table, not the couch by the small table, but the biggest couch. Mm -hmm. And she just, she was sitting, and then she kind of leaned over, and she was like talking, and I'm not like calling what she was saying, like she was talking to us. and. Me and Jess was like both in front of the couch. 
brought around the couch. And we was all just, like, everyone was just sitting there, like, just sitting. And she... What was she me. talking about? I'm not sure. Okay. Like, I wasn't really, like, listening to what she was saying, but she was talking to us. What, did she have a tone? Yeah, like, she was just, like, like, almost like, like, you, like, you know, she's still angry, but she's not, at this point, like, shouting how she was. But she's just, like, you know, she's... She's saying some stuff, but I'm not really, you know, listening. I'm just thinking and stuff, so I don't know. I'll just, I don't know. All right, before we go any further, I'm going to stop right here where everybody's sitting there. Mom's on the couch. You're kind of sitting there in front of her. Are you hurt? You were standing. Are you hurt at this point? Um, I, of course, I mean, I had, you know, hair pulled out. We had some, like, some... Probably um, bite marks. And so your mom had bit you at this she, point? Yeah, she had bit me more than once. She bit me afterward again, too, but she had already bit and me. And I'm going to get to afterward, but but at this point, you'd already been bitten. Bitten. Just, you know, tired and everybody just looked tired. Like everybody didn't, it wasn't, it was, everybody just looked at tired. Like me and Jazz was sitting here. And she's just still talking and So what happened then? She like just leaned forward and and, and um the ottoman was well, not even the little black um thing was right in front and she just leaned towards it. And I didn't notice that the knife was on it because I you know, wanted him just sitting right by it. But she just leaned forward. And she grabbed it, and then she like jumped up. And then what happened? She jumped up towards Jazz, and I'm not sure if Jazz got cut or not. But like she kind of, you know, like you know, surprised. Mm -hmm. And then I got up, and I got behind her, you know, trying to take the knife from her again. This time, but she, she wouldn't let it go, and then. She was like kind of elbowing me from back because I was behind. Mm -hmm. And I was just, again, I was like, just stop, just stop. And then she says, I'm again. I think she might be going to die. What'd she say? She said, something again about we going to die. And then what happened? It's like back, I remember, I remember being like by the couch and stuff. I remember at one point she had me, like kind of like her palm around my neck. And I think, I think I, I think I bit her trying to get her palm around my neck. Where'd you bite her? Do you remember? Yeah, probably had to be somewhere on Okay. Then what happened that you remember? Jazz was trying to get her off me and she was... Who has the knife at this point? I don't... At this point, I, I don't know. Okay. I just remember like, kind of like being off the couch. Just trying to kind of get purchased with my feet. What happened next that you remember? She was on the wall again. Which she, wall was? The wall by the bedroom. Jazz and wall was by the wall again. And I was, you know, I don't know how who had the knife first. And it was by the wall again. And she was just like, you know, how, how, kind of her teeth, like, gritted. She was just still saying stuff. 
just hold the whole time. Okay. Mm. I don't. I don't remember. I don't. I really don't like remember her being a stand. Did you ask to have your mom? She's only once that I saw. Her. Did you stab your mom? I don't remember stabbing her. Do you, while you may not remember, do you think you stabbed your mom? I don't think I did. I don't remember a lot of my day. How did it end? She was on the floor again. We was all on the floor. How'd you all get on the floor? I guess, you know, it was like when she would kind of come at me, Jazz would try to get her off me. When she was on Jazz, I would try to get her off Jazz. And I don't, we was all on the floor. Nobody's like nobody was on. Don't nobody was on top of anybody or anything. And I never end. She was just, just crying and stuff. And then like she was still talking, but she just stopped. She stopped like you know, really fighting. How did she end up on the floor? How did she get to that spot? Do you know? No, oh, it was no. Um, like, I'm not sure at like, the what came what. I just, I know, like, it's, like I said, it's like all, like, it's a blur, but then I have, like, just snapshots. Like, they're just in my brain. All right, so she's on the floor, and you said she's still talking. What's she saying? <sighs> what kind of kids are y'all? Somehow she wasn't supposed to be our mom. And then, like I said, I was trying to like not really, I wasn't really like, it was service that I remember hearing, but I don't remember a lot of the stuff she said because like I said the whole time she was talking. So she's on the floor. Um, where's the knife at this point? I don't think, I don't remember. What kind of knife was it? Like, a big black, the kind of black, regular mm -hmm. knife, like a kitchen knife. Okay. Um, okay. And during and during the whole confrontation, was there just one knife, or was there ever more than one knife? Okay. Your mom's on the floor. She's still talking. What happened then? We thought we just trying, like kneeling. I was kneeling. Like this point, it's still not even real. I mean, she said something I didn't hear, her, and then Jazz said she said take it to the to the uh, tub. So uh, um, I think I, I had her her hands, and Jazz her feet, with kind of like a joint effort. Probably. Had your mom still been moving? Was she still physically able to move at all at that point? I'm not sure. And, and the reason I'm asking, could she have gotten up and, and uh, either crawled or walked to the bathtub at that point? I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, she was. She wasn't like you know, just like stock steel or anything. Okay. Was she in pain? She was the same. Like she wasn't like out. Like she didn't know through the whole. Day she never screamed or ouch. I just don't know if it was adrenaline or what. So you had you, you had about hands. Yeah, I think I had. I was at the top. And and Jazz had her, her feet. Yeah, but she was she was heavy. And what did y'all do? Excuse me. So, um, we put him to. Did y'all, did you 
How were you able to get her to the bathroom? Were you able to pick her up off the floor? Did you have to drag her? It, it seemed like a little bit of both, it almost seemed like. And why in that while you're in that process, is your mom saying anything, making any yeah. sounds? What's she saying? She was just saying, you know, um, something about the, the warm water or something, maybe. Maybe she told her something. Oh, no, like my mom's already just, it was like an out of body experience, no. Really. Right. And so y'all dragged her to the bathroom. Because you're there. And when you got to the bathroom, what you, what happened there? We just put it in. The water was turned on. I did. Jazz stayed, and I left, and I went to close the door. All right. So during this this last part, the back door had been open. Yeah. When you, after you closed the back door. Did you go back to the bathroom? No. Like the door wasn't like wide, it was just kind of, you know, open. And I just stayed there because I just kind of looked around and everything. When you left the bathroom, had your mom already died or was she still alive? She was still talking. What was she, was she still talking when she was in the tub? What was she saying in the tub? She said something. She just, she said something so weird. She said something about my um my grandpa, and she said something like that. She said um you talking about you got raped, and I tried to keep Dwayne away because he was always up on y'all. Just you know, I just really didn't have nothing to do with anything. Just like. When did you realize that your mom was dead? Or how did you realize your mom was dead? Well, Jazz came back out of the room. And we just, well, we didn't ask her, and she didn't say. At some point in time, you did realize that morning your mom was dead. Yeah. Jazz said when your mom died, y'all argued about something, but she couldn't remember what you argued about. What What did you argue about? I don't think we necessarily argued. It wasn't really arguing. So your mom's dead. And she's back in the bathroom. What'd y'all do then? Um, she went, went to the kitchen. She went to the Jazz went to the kitchen. I was just um still in the living room. And then she had got a bottle or something. And she was just kind of frantic, and she's like, you know, and what are you going to do? It's like nothing you could really do so much. Then ball with something, you mean ball with something? Like clean that solution or something? Clean that agent? And did she try to clean up some? Yeah, I think she like poured out the whole bottle or something. Did you try to clean up some? You no, know, like I didn't. I didn't wipe nothing down or anything. What happened then? So she tried to clean. Yeah, I don't. I don't even know if it was, it's like she was just doing something just to be doing it. Like it was just we both was crying. What happened then? Um, went back to um to my room. What did you do with the clothes that you already had on? I just took them off and just took 
Did the clothes that you had on your shorts and your t-shirt, did they have blood on them? Mm -hmm. It was a, I think it, my shirt, I think it was a dark shirt anyway. Probably some black or red. What'd you do with the clothes? I just took them off. And I went to the bathroom, to my bathroom. Okay. Mm -hmm. What ultimately happened to the clothes? that you had on? Just put them in the bag. Did anything else go in that bag? Um, she put the knife, the pot. But she didn't really give me an inventory of it when we left. Did she put everything in the bag? Did you put anything in the no. bag? What was I the... I gave her like, my clothes and stuff. I didn't put what was the purpose of putting the stuff in the bag? I don't know about the bag until we got to the front door and then took the door away. And, well, obviously, I guess y'all planned to do something after your mom died. What was the plan for the day? It was like a dis. It was almost. I kind know of people always say about twenty and a half a month. It was like nothing really spoken. It was kind of just like, I don't know, I don't call it a twin thing because it's not. It's just like aiding each other. You know, and I was just, it just, it wasn't no plan going through my head. It was just, I was just, I was just thinking, I was just thinking about that. Where was your mom's phone? during all this? I guess in our room. Oh, I've never seen it. Did, did you ever try to find the phone during the course of the, the, the scuffle and the struggle and the fight with your mom? Do mm -hmm. you know if Jazz ever tried to find the phone during the scuffle and the fight with your mom? I don't know. Did your mom ever try to find the phone during the, mm. the scuffle of the fight with your mom? Oh, she never like ran towards her mom or anything. Do you recall where your mom charged the phone in the town home, where she kept her charger? No. So much stuff had changed since we had lived over there. And you'd only been there about a week. I understand that. Uh, so, Things were put in a bag, and when y'all left that morning, did you go out through the garage? Did you go out through the back door? Did you go out through the front door? The, the, the front door, it's really kind of the side, side door, but, but I guess it was the main door. Yes. Um, y'all went out the main door, and you went where? We went um, going towards the right. We went towards the right. <coughs> we went out the back gate, the other right. side gate. And when you went out the gate, you still had the bag with yeah. the stuff in it. Uh, what what happened with that bag? Um, um, when we first got out there, we didn't really know where we were going, so we were just kind of standing here. And then I walked down towards like the car wash, so I could see the road, mm -hmm. I could see where the road led. And then when I came back. She was like, um, it was these men outside, and they was working on um, <coughs> these things like where they go up there, get in the machine, and go all the way up, like the lines. Mm -hmm. And there was like some guys there, and um, she asked, why well, they was talking to her. So I guess I don't know if she asked or not, but she was, they was talking to her, and she put the bag inside the dumpster. After the bag was put inside the dumpster, what y'all do? Step on, we um, walked towards, instead of going to the right, we went straight. Mm -hmm. And then we made a right, and we kind of um, we went, got to the gas station, and we got a ride. And you got a ride to school? 
Yes. Um, and that was that was your plan to go to school that day. It wasn't really a plan. I mean, after your mom died. No, we didn't. Really, we just like, like I said, it was nothing really spoken. It wasn't like, okay, now let's go to school. It was just like it felt like it felt unreal. And it felt like it was just trying to go on normal. Mm -hmm. And when you got to school, what did you throw away at school? It's a paper towel. Uh, where did the paper towels come from? Inside the man's car. Uh, roll of paper towels, and why did you take the man's roll of paper towels? It was just like at my feet, and then he wasn't. I asked him, you know, kind of was at my feet, and then I sat down. He was like, "We can just throw it away." So I got the car, just took it. What were you going to do? Y'all went to school that day. I know what, I'm not going to ask you what time you got there. I know what time you got there, and I got videotape when you got there at the school. I have the notes that the counselor gave you so you could go to class. Um, you went to school. You rode the bus home that day. What was the plan? What were you going to do once you got home that day? It wasn't. It just wasn't a plan. Like, you know, through the whole day we didn't talk. Um, so when we got on the bus and stuff, we... I wasn't really expecting it to be, you know, as is. And throughout the whole day in school, I was just, it felt like in moments, you know, the was just going to come or something like that. And that's how I felt. Like I didn't, I didn't expect to get home that day. And then I did, we just kind of, when we walked in, it was like seeing it all over again. It was like, it really happened. We just kind of did ourselves on the phone, called the police. Of course, we didn't have any phones. And so I went out to go to the neighbors and the police car. Well, the, let me ask you did you look for your mom's phone? Because we found it on the bed in the bedroom. No, we didn't look. Okay. And you went outside. When you got off the bus that day, when you came home from school and you got off the bus, did you see the sheriff's deputy in the neighborhood? Did you no. know he was there? Mm -hmm. So, when when you came out of the when you came out of the town home, what'd you come out to do? What were you gonna do once you came Went out? To a neighbor's house. Okay. And tell me, when you came out, did you see the Rockdale County Sheriff's deputy? Yeah. And then you ran to him. Yes. Yes, sir. When in the course of the altercation with your mom did you get cut? I'm not sure. I don't even remember filling it to afterwards. And and from from what I have seen, you had bite marks on your arms and your hands. Yeah, I had one right here, one right here. Okay. And you had a cut on your finger. Yeah. Did you have any other injuries? From the fight with your mom? Yeah, I have on my side. And what was on your side? A cut. Okay. Uh, Early college. A cut from a knife, a scratch, yeah. a cut from a knife. Mm -hmm. Besides that cut and the one on your finger, did you have any other cuts? Um, I had, my boob hurt it. It was, um, it was just really red at this point. Really red. It didn't. Later on, it kind of formed, I guess. And my my hair, my neck hurt. It. The medallion. How did it end up in one of the tennis shoes back in your bedroom? Do you know? I don't know. No. What was that medallion for? Um, I got that when I was in elementary school. I think it was a field day. For some type of event on field day with long jump or yeah. something like that. Okay. I had a lot of them. Your mom on her left hand 
had a lot of bruises on her hand, down her arm and on her hand, and a lot of cuts across the top of her hand. Do you know why she was cut on her hand? Did she have anything in her hand that y'all were trying to get out of her hand? Anything you were trying to get away from her? Do you know why she had those cuts? Well, I said at one point when she had like I don't know if it came from that, or maybe maybe Jess scratched her or I scratched her. I'm not sure, but like I said, at one point she was like holding the knife backwards, and I don't know if it happened. Yet. I don't remember. Items in the yard. There were two photographs, a clutch, a little black clutch, and a necklace that were found out in the yard. you know how those got there? Mm -hmm. How those I get there? That. After when the sheriff came in, and he was kind of looking, was all standing there, and I mean, just had three things at the kitchen, and then he said, get something from the, the mom, like, I don't know the exact word, but he was like, you know, get something from your mom. So, remember how about it? And then... I got the two pictures. I know I got the two pictures, and from the mirror, um, the mirror she had pictures. Mm -hmm. And I got the two pictures from the mirror, and I'm guessing Jazz got the clutch and the necklace. Cause I don't remember having that. And then we had I had it in my hand. She had it in her hand. And then we got out towards the um the front again, and. She just like broke down, and I was standing over, like you know, kind of holding her and stuff. And I guess we dropped the stuff, and I didn't really think about it. Just now, the people came. Anything that I haven't asked you that you want me to know about what happened? <laughs> Sorry. It was just confusion. This like turmoil. It's just it's just when we get nervous stopped. Were you aware that you had court coming up, you know? Yeah, my name. Um. That was the whole point. It was just we we know we had it. Judge Snyder told us to come in court on Monday. We'll see what we'll do. So we went home, you know. Yeah, when we went home, me and Jazz talked. Me and my mom talked. You know, Jazz, at this point, she just didn't, she didn't talk to her, you know. But me and mom talked. And we all, me and my mom just said we was going to give it our best shot. And I just, so then, the first time the police was called, I don't even remember what it was called about. But, oh, let me go back. So Judge Shiner said, you know, write down everything that happened, stuff like that, anything that happened, just, you know, and let me know. And, um, um, you know, recorded, you know, everything that happened that I thought he needed to know. And it was just, but then the first night the police was called because that it was that day that she came home and she didn't, she came home with some food, some food, some wings and fries and she didn't, she didn't bring us any and she said they like ate in front of our faces and then, you know, it kind of, we went into our rooms and went to my room and, you know, shut ourselves in and 
She got mad and I don't even remember what happened that night, but the police got called. This is when you're upon your return in yeah. juvenile court. The police got called. Yeah. Right. And, and then the police got called again? Yeah, again the police got called on the party night. We came home from the shop and I'm aware of all that. Did the but the but the question I have for you is did you think on Monday that the judge will allow you to stay with your mom or I thought that he would see with everything like when she came home like that night and stuff. Like she wasn't really taking it serious. And I just thought, you know, him just say he wanted to see us again. And that was and you know, we just this what me and just Jazz just kept saying. All right, Monday. Just gotta deal with this to Monday. Cause don't I don't people just think I hated my mom, I didn't hate my mom. I love my mom very, very much. Ms. Whitehead, thank you very much. Um, it's now approximately 3.07 p.m., still Tuesday, uh, February the 26th, 2013. Ms. Whitehead, thank you very much.